Hi, I'm Tim Rumble, and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. Back working full-time on the Humvee. I got about a month before I have to have this thing operational. I've already come out this morning and cut out a part on the Arc Droid with the Everlast 82i. This is my actual second Arc Droid. I sold the first unit. This is basically a duplicate of what I built before. I sold the first unit because I thought we were going to go full time. So I was busy selling off the full shop. So we didn't have stuff sitting here. Um, but I definitely seen a need for having this simple little tool uh, to cut out stuff. It's just actually become part of my skill set. So I bought another one. But when I bought this one, I bought their X2 feature that allows you to cut a, a longer area. I didn't even hook up the, uh, the little interface for it because I'll just use this to move around and cut out a, a full sheet. Now you can program this machine with this user interface and that's what I'm gonna show you today, just how simple it is to make a part. The first part I made this morning is down here and it turned out absolutely perfect. And I made a template and I'm covering up these little, uh, the tubes, just making a cover plate for it, just so it looks nice and clean. But I went over to the other side and there's a slightly different angle so I thought, you know what, why not get the video out and show you guys exactly the process of making a part. So I turned on the machine. First thing you'll do is hit home. And I'll exit out of this. So you'll hit home. The machine are already home. What I've done is I've connected the stylus and you plug that in. You go over here on the interface, you go to trace. And then you turn this knob counterclockwise and that will run that stylus down onto, and that's, that's close enough. Let's see if I can work around this and you guys can still see what I'm doing. Basically what I'm gonna do is a node trace around this and work my way around the part. And so I'll start here. You just basically push the button. Yeah, we'll go to there. And the interface is picking up these nodes. And when you get around to the start point, you'll double click this and that'll close it. And that'll show you what the part actually looks like. That's how, that's the programming of the part. And then here you have the center cut, which that means it'll cut on center on the line. I actually don't want that. This is a right cut, which would be on the inside of the line. And this is a L cut, uh, which will be on the outside of the line. So basically I'll hit check and then I'll do save. Okay. And then I'll exit out of this screen. And I'm going to go to run just to see if I tr did a good job of tracing the part that I want. And I'll leave the stylus in. Just see what happens. It's going to touch off. Now it's going to run on its own. And you can see how fast this is. We're at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. And most of that's just me basically telling you the, uh, the process. I use these little magnets just to hold the piece of cardboard down. I get lucky enough when they're not in the way. I think they're a 10 pound magnet I got off of Amazon. And being that there's just a slight change in this, it's, you know, another minute to program another part that's gonna work better for you and look better. And that's looking super, super good. Exactly uh, what I want. Not a super critical part, but it's gonna be a nice part nevertheless. Okay, so now what I will do is I will unplug this. There's two little cams on, on the head here. You rotate those out of the way. You'll pull this off. I usually store this just on top of the plasma cutter. And I went with the 82i instead of the 62i this time, just in case I need to cut something uh, thick. Sometimes I have people that ask me to cut uh, inch, if I can cut inch, and the 82 will cut inch in a CNC process. Right, so clip that on, clip that on. 
Now we got a torch on it. So we'll come down here, we'll turn on our plasma cutter. Do a quick check over here on the air compressor. Air is still on. The 82i is really nice because it doesn't use a ton of air. It's only 60 PSI. And I have this turned down at 60 amps instead of running 80 amps. Um, that way I could just use the same settings that I already know uh, and previously have used. So what I will do here is I'll get this out of the way. Now, if you want to do a dry run with the plasma torch attached, you can see this little uh, torch sign or lightning bolt sign with the, the line through it. Uh, that means that it's not live. So we want to go live on this time because we've already verified that's what we want and basically hit run. It'll come down and touch off. second post flow on it but being that it just cut a small little part and that just lifts off and look at the lack of dross on the back side i mean what a what a beautiful part i'll take that and clean that up on the sander a little bit but uh absolutely a beautiful job and that was just with the settings that came kind of programmed in the machine i haven't even played with anything i thought i would just give it a run and see uh, what it was and we're up and running literally i built the table and got this whole process going on this thing in just probably about uh, like maybe a day's worth of work. Um, wiring in the CNC port, pins one and two, uh, soldering those in and connecting them to the back took a little bit. I got to say, I'm probably not the best skilled uh, solder guy. Uh, little pins, and I think it's more of a seeing thing that uh, worked out really well. I give this machine a 10 out of 10 uh, for what it is. It cuts out a very accurate part for what you're doing. You can use Fusion 360 uh, Sheet Cam or Inkscape, I believe, to uh, import a DXF uh, file into the machine um, and get you know more uh, solid parts. But for this thing, um, arm just kind of hanging out. There's no gantry on, on double shear on it. Um, it really, in my experience from the last one, it just makes really nice parts. And with fabrication, stuff isn't super... Uh, critical, you know, if you're within a, a 16th of an inch on something like this, it, probably a quarter of an inch on something like this, your weld bead's going to probably cover that up anyway. But uh, I give both of these machines two thumbs up. Absolutely love this. And it's why I've purchased it again. If you guys got questions and comments, please hit me up down below. Um, I will be doing a video daily uh, on my progress on this high low Humvee camper. And, uh, if you haven't seen this before the spares are on spindles and they're the lowest part of the departure angle and filming this uh is a little tough here um but it's in the next couple of days i'll be out in the side yard where i can finish up the rest of the canopy but basically the top on this is going to move up 24 inches on linear actuators to uh, basically make a a level of six foot three, which I happen to be uh, on the inside and um, still have kind of a sleek look going down the road. And I show you my quick little chicken scratch of what I'm thinking it'll kind of look like. And the inspiration uh, on the build. So uh, please like and subscribe and uh, follow for more. I'll be I got some welding videos coming out and some more fabrication stuff in this next month. And that'll set me up to start going on adventures. That's going to be it for now. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I'll catch you here next time.